Well, it's been really awesome the last two months uh, talking about how we can empower our students to become more engaged, more self-directed, more responsible for their learning with some ideas that we've been hashing out uh, through different conversations that we've been having with teachers in a variety of different districts. And so we'll do a quick recap here and try to lay all of this out today, as well as the fact that we're going to dive deeper into a tool, Flipgrid, that we think helps to really pull all of these pieces together. And so as you can see here, we started with thinking about how students can start to self-assess using a single point rubric. We think it's really important for students to be uh, reflective in what they've learned, where they've hit, if they've had misses, and a single point rubric, as we shared in earlier Facebook Lives, really helps to focus in the students on what's really important in the learning and allowing them the opportunity to decide for themselves, did they hit it or not? And as we talked uh, through that process of self-assessment, we encouraged a place, a digital landing place for them to kind of house and for them to select the work that they wanted to present based on it. And we gave some great tips about using Google Slides, which we think is such a flexible platform, as well as providing a portfolio template for you to just take and use and share with your students so that you can get rocking and rolling in that process. And last week we identified kind of that next step we're moving over to our middle box here of getting students to start to work with their peers and start to think about how you can give feedback and using some feedback protocols and Beth outlined some really amazing different steps of a team. And so if you missed out on any of those prior flip, uh, prior Facebook lives, excuse me, <laughs> that uh, we outlined this process, feel free to dive back in. Uh, we're going to be sharing out a link to a blog post uh, that will have links to all of those resources. And while you're here, let us know you're here. Leave us a, a comment or a note on the Facebook, uh, whether you're viewing this now or you're viewing this later. Uh, we'd love to hear where you are at or if you've tried or used any of these tools. So you can see here on this last two steps of our self-assessment and feedback cycle, we're actually using the same tool because it is such a great and flexible tool to use. And that is the tool of Flipgrid. And so one of those pieces that makes Flipgrid such a strong uh, use for this in changing your work to become digital is the ability to record your screen. So we're gonna actually kind of take down our area here and we're gonna go into a bit of a demo. And this will be fun because I'm gonna chat and Beth Swans is gonna drive and we're in two different locations. So we're just gonna kind of see how that goes. <laughs> So if you've never used Flipgrid before, Flipgrid is a video response program. And Beth, we are viewing your desktop right now. See, I told you that it just doesn't <laughs> always like me. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try this again. You bet. And I want this. All right, let's try this one. Now, can you see Flipgrid? Now we can see Flipgrid. Okay, good. <laughs> so I'm going to invite Beth to go into any of your practice boards that you have where we could leave a response somewhere just for play. So a Flipgrid uh, board or a Flipgrid topic, excuse me, they recently updated uh, their own language about Flipgrid. Uh, a teacher would set up this topic and we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. Uh, but within Flipgrid, you can do your own screen recording, which is a super powerful tool and layer that they've added in. So Beth, if you want to go into where you can leave a response, I think if you scroll down just a little bit, record a response, there we go. I think one of the biggest things if you've never heard about Flipgrid to say or note is that Flipgrid is free. Hey, we love free tools. And the fact that it can do all of these things 
on a web-based platform makes it super powerful. So if you can scroll down just a little bit on your screen, Beth, the screen recording opportunity is right next to that big red button. So if you go over to where those triple dots are at and it says options and we click on that, you can see here that you have all of these different um, avenues to how you want to do your recording. So you can upload a clip, all the way on the far right side though is where that record screen button is at. And so once you do that, you can just click on start recording and you may have to allow um, in another box what you would want to have recorded. Um, and you're recording your screen. And so as everything that you talk and everything that you say is being recorded uh, within Flipgrid. So if you wanna click on stop, yeah, I'm going to hear my own voice. Um, and you're recording your screen. <laughs> so go ahead and you can either add more or you can go to next. Um, if you go back one, uh, they do have some very simple editing uh, that you can trim the ends on your video clip if you wanted to. So it also has a built-in video editor, which is super powerful. So we would advocate for the use of this for students to take that digital portfolio that they created in slides, pull that piece of work up or work that they selected and give them the opportunity to explain what they were thinking, what they really took away from that. You could use another one of those feedback protocols that we talked about in the last session to help guide their conversa conversation going forward. Okay. Do you want me to go next? I would love it. Okay, so um, the next step would be within that fee those feedback teams is that um, students are sharing, like Amber said, to their group. And we really talked about how important it is to have groups created for students to continue to return back to, to really build those working relationships. So actually within Flipgrid, you can create groups. And I suggest adding, creating your topic first, much like Amber um, has shown us here, and then going into create groups. So right there next to topics is the little tab that says groups. And that's going to click on that. And then that blue button that says create a group. And this is where you would, you know, add your group name. Um, and then if you scroll down, I believe a little bit, Beth, um, you can choose whether students would log in with their student email or student username. So um, Beth's already named it group one. She's chosen student email addresses, and then she can just click on next. And um, one thing to point out, and I think this is going to be very powerful yet, it's not here, but it's coming, is that Google Classroom is going to integrate with Flipgrid of some sort to, so that you can roster your classes. So I think this is probably going to really um, smooth out this process when it comes. But for right now, what you would do is add students by email addresses into this group. So if I have a group of four kids, I would add them by email address. So Beth's going to put in my email email and then um, I can add a guest password. I'm not going to worry about them since I'm, you know, adding people by hand and then she can click next when she's ready. And then this is what's nice when I have already created this topic beforehand, I can um, click on the select topics and you might have to click on the little yeah drop down carrot. Oh no, the whole thing. And I can just choose topic from my list. So having created that topic beforehand makes this creating group thing go much quicker because I can just have this topic and then it duplicates that topic for each group that I create. And so students can continue to return back to that spot. And it really is a nice way for them to kind of get in a routine of doing the same thing over and over again. Oh, and Beth clicked to duplicate topics. Thank you. Um, and then I have a way of inviting those students to, they should get an um, email inviting them, but she can also share this link with students as well to that uh, belong to that group. And here there we, we are. There we go. There we go. Easy enough. So then I'm up, right? Yes. Okay. So once you have the group, now it's time to actually, there's a couple things about creating um, videos that are sort of, that they're very, very simple, but um, a couple of things that make it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go back down here to my introductions and we're gonna say that the students are ready to create their video. So one thing that is sometimes um, that 
students can, this is a, a, a prompt or a, a support that we may not, you may not notice. When I hit record a response, over here in the right side, I've got two different little icons. One of them is show topic. And when I click on that, it tells me what actually the teacher said I'm supposed to make this video about. That does not show up on the video. So that can be a refresher. The other thing is this sticky note option. So a student can create a list of, so if you're giving feedback, I've read my peer, um, their piece, or I've looked over what they created, and I have jotted down somewhere else some information. I can paste that, those details that I wanna make sure I mention in this sticky note, and then record my video, and they won't see the sticky note. So it's a way of kind of keeping things together. Now, I'm just gonna mention, right? I'm sorry. I love that piece because I would literally stick actual sticky notes on my computer when I would record something. And the fact that it's digital and it can't be seen is great. It's so much better. So that is not there in the teacher piece. When you as the teacher record your topic, sticky notes is not an option. So teachers, you still have to stick your physical notes. I also just wanna mention that I'm using dual monitors. So when I look at my camera, I'm actually looking away from, uh, anyway, it, it messes things up. So I just, I'm gonna say in a normal flip grid, you don't see profile, you see your head on face. Okay, so that's one of the things I wanna mention. The other thing is I'm gonna go down a little bit farther. And we know that students don't always want to have their faces on a video, which I find super interesting because they wanna put their faces anywhere else, but not always for school. And there's lots of reasons, privacy reasons. If we go into the effects, there's all kinds of additional things that you can add to a Flipgrid. And one of those is filters. When I click on filters, I can change what my look is like. I can give myself a, a Christmas look, but these two at the bottom, one is called bricks and the other is pixel, actually pixelates my screen, which then allows me to record my voice, but you don't have to see me. So it's really a handy help for students that feel a little bit hesitant to be on the screen. I'm just gonna mention that there's all kinds of other filters. Um, there's emojis. There is one really nice thing is the board. So um, I can have, I can add text if I wanted to really get fancy. You can also do the split screen and you can slide yourself in and out. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff to play with. But for what we're doing with feedback teams, it really is this whole idea that you don't have to have your face seen in the video. I'm gonna stop sharing. Any, any, were, any other um, Flipgrid how-tos we wanna show folks? So one thing that I would just point out as um, a dual tip is that we've been talking about using Flipgrid with um, kind of at the end of this feedback team and portfolio loops and um, another tool that has Flipgrid integrated into it is something called Wakelet. And Wakelet also has this um, really powerful way of creating portfolios too, if students are interested in doing that. Anything that has uh, a link, a URL to it can be added to this digital portfolio. Um, but what's really neat about it, and I think what really took it to the next level in the portfolio world for me, was that it has Flipgrid integrated into it so that it has all of those things that Beth just showed us, but it's actually in another tool. So students could um, give a brief you know, summary of um, something that they've added to their portfolio or um, can do like a screen recording too, just like Amber showed us. So there are lots of great things um, in Flipgrid and it's really, I think it's always a kind of exciting to see tools you know, smash into other tools like that. So just kind of a heads up, a little extra nugget. Um, and I believe along with that Google Classroom integration is that mic only is going to be an option within the Flipgrid integration, if I'm correct. And that comes, I think I saw December 21st. So start of the new year, you probably should see some different things happening in Flipgrid, some new updates. Sort of a Christmas well, present, on our calls, right? right? Yeah, why not? Why not? Well, I think it's a really great way to kind of think about that whole cycle of reflection and getting feedback and allowing, again, opportunities to empower our students to really start to take ownership 
within there? Because what happens when students do that? Well, lots of good stuff happens. <laughs> I think one of the things that we just need to keep saying over and over and over is, this also shifts some of the responsibility and some of the workload off a of teacher's shoulders. Now, I would say we often think about this, especially in secondary, but it can happen at all grade levels. So thinking about students helping students be responsible for their work is really a powerful thing. And at a time when we're all in different places at different times, it's really nice to have a digital tool to kind of support this work so that, I mean, even myself, I can imagine if I was giving feedback to someone that I hadn't quite established a super awesome working relationship with yet, if I could in my, um, in that split screen that you showed Beth, right in the notes, my sent my feedback stems that, you know, was the protocol of how I was providing feedback and could kind of show that um, without, you know, sometimes it's hard to give people feedback face, face to face. And, um, but if I can show that it's also thoughtful feedback, I think it might give people the, the courage to give feedback when it's kind of, it can be kind of uncomfortable at times. So. So I, this always makes me think of Jim Knight and his coaching feedback. And one of the things that he says over and over is you should, as a, as a uh, teacher, you should be able to watch yourself in action with nobody else watching for your, the first round. And I feel like that sort of this give recording feedback gives me as the recipient a chance to hear that feedback without Amber watching my face as I'm hearing that feedback. Because both positive and negative is written all over our faces. And by recording it, I, I preserve a little bit of my own um, self-esteem in that process. I think it's really, that's a really powerful piece. I also like the layer of, it's not just one person giving feedback. And sometimes some students may need to hear a couple of times, the work that you're doing is good. And when you can hear it from other people, especially your peers, I think that means a lot. And I think that really helps to invest them even deeper in doing a good job and putting forth their best effort in these reflection pieces. And you know what the truth is, it's good for all of us. I mean, you know, who doesn't want to hear somebody say positive things about the tasks that you have in front of you and give you, give you constructive suggestions for other ways to think about it. Exactly. Well, we hope that you guys have gained a lot from this short series that we've done here. We're going to keep thinking and cooking uh, ideas up about other ways uh, that we've tried to talk and implement these things with teachers that we've worked with. And if there's any uh, strategies or questions that you have or would like for us to continue to explore, please leave us a comment or chat about it. We uh, I love chatting with these two ladies and learning and getting some ideas rolling. So we would love to hear from you that are in the field and trying different things or struggling with different things. So thanks for checking us out and uh, we'll see you on the other side.